It appears as line item number seven. It is REZ 2016-23 Brown Project. Jason, would you present? Yes, sir. Ultimately, the request here is to rezone the subject property from a one-acre density R1 zoning to a half-acre density R21 zoning. With that, you have seen this request before just over a year ago. Uh, we've tried to detail some of that history and research within your packet. Ultimately, as far as slides, we have the aerial, the zoning map. Uh, Commissioner Gladwin, I did do a, a zoomed out zoning map for you so you could actually see where there's some R10 uh, and R1 in the area. Um, there's not really any R21, but there's plenty of R10 in this area. You then have the future development map, as well as a draft layout that was given to us a little over a year ago just to give you some sense of how the particular property could be subdivided. I don't think this is a final layout but at least gives you an idea about the proposed density and how many homes could go there. We also have the follow-up on the um, petition that was submitted last year. There have been updates to this petition but I wanted to put this map on there just so you had that for your reference. Beyond those updates we will get right into consideration and we'll try to address any concerns or questions you may have. Mr. Bolson, back into the petition. Yes, sir. What, what does the green represent? Uh, the green represents all the names that appeared on the petition, uh, but since that petition was turned in, staff was able to verify that four of those signatures were forged. So this map actually on the western side should be mostly white instead of green. Jason, the reason for denial last year, would you rehash that for us? For sure. Commissioner Wills? That was my question. I, I think the concerns last year for the particular development focused on the concerns about density. There were concerns from the surrounding neighbors about the density of the proposed subdivision, as well as traffic. If you look on the zoning map, it really highlights um, that large purple institutional area across the street. And I don't know if it'll show you on the aerial. It won't. Um, but that large purple area is owned by the Lowndes County School Board, and on the western side of that property is where Lowndes Middle School is located. So definitely during the morning and afternoon times for, you know, an hour, there's a peak travel time where there is definitely traffic on Copeland. So I would say the concerns were density, um, concerns from the overall neighborhood, and then concerns about traffic. Was there any concerns on the single in and out? I'm just curious. Uh, yes, sir, and I think ultimately that's one of the reasons why this is preliminary is if it goes over that 24-25 lot threshold, then the engineering staff will be requiring two points of ingress and egress. And you're at one right now? How many lots? I would have to count them up. I would have to count them up, sir, but I thought they were just under that. Thank you, Matt. 21. So 22, 22 lots. So they're really, they're really close, but you can see how close that street is to Copeland. And I thought engineering's comments last year were, it probably would help to go ahead and connect that. But that, it, it, it did not get that far. So those are only preliminary comments. Hey, uh, Mr. Blair. This preliminary plan you're looking at mm -hmm. is from last year. Yes, ma'am. Does that still apply for this year's application? Because the site plan is not a PD zoning, it's just a conceptual plan, so I just put it in here for reference so we had a visual about what could be expected as far as what was proposed last year. The developer's here tonight, he may speak and have some updates, but I don't have an updated conceptual plan to show you. And this site location is directly across the street from Lowndes Middle, is that correct? Uh, it is southeast of Lowndes Middle. It's directly across the street from the kind of extended pecan orchard that the school board did. If you look on this map, Lowndes Middle shows up on the very western side with a unique symbol there at the southwestern corner, mm -hmm. and the subject property is to the southeast of that. They're definitely within walking distance, I'd say a thousand feet. Well, what is the classification of Leicester Road? Is that a, how big is that road? Can, can they actually connect road. to it? Is it Leicester? Leicester is, let that be the is an unimproved local road. Um, so it is a, it's a dirt road. So if they did connect to it, hence the condition that you have within your packet, um, the county engineer wanted to recommend that there would be um, a paving requirement if that if the developer so chose to do that. We don't anticipate him to, but we put that in there just for protection. The Lester Road leads directly into inner perimeter also. Yes, sir, it sure does. So let me make sure I understand this. Mm -hmm. If the developer chooses to have two access into the property, one off Copeland and one off 
Leicester. They would be required to pave the part of Leicester in the traffic. We would like for it to be paved, yes ma'am. Even though that would alleviate some of the traffic issues that might be yes. that might jump onto Copeland, they would still be required to Yes, they if if they chose if the traffic was so severe or they just chose this is a better layout for us, or the county engineer decided after some traffic study this is what needs to happen, then we want to make sure the developer paid for that road to be paved up to the nearest paved portion. We anticipated if that happened, it would be paved to the north along Leicester back to Copeland because it's a shorter distance. Is the, pro the portion of Leicester that's uh, adjacent on that bigger map, just directly south of the property, mm -hmm. is that paved? No, ma'am. No portion of Leicester no is paved. Everything south of Copeland and north of Copeland is, is an unpaved road. So Lester on both sides, I know what you're talking about, Lester on both sides is an unapproved road. Commissioner Willis, you had a question? Uh, yeah, I was going to ask <clears throat> what the engineer thought about the traffic with the school system uh, at the, in the mornings and at, in the evening time. That would be a concern to me. I understand. I, I know he considered it, but because of the limited nature of the peak traffic he didn't propose any turning lanes or even a, potentially a traffic light at this location i know he considered it but he didn't think the density would be enough of an addition to the area to warrant an improvement of that nature <coughs> so it, i'm just curious just continuing commissioner bullets thought so 21 lots possibly two cars per house so 40 something cars dumping yes, in sir. right across from the school mm -hmm. is not something to be concerned about I think it was a concern. I just don't think it was enough of a concern to trigger an improvement like a stoplight or um, some kind of maybe protected left turn lane. I do. I think he considered it. I just don't think he he felt that was enough. The density was enough to warrant those improvements. Okay. You mentioned, I think, twice already that they show the primary right now is on Copeland. Yes, sir. And then you mentioned a secondary, if you will, on the lesser heat. That 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 subdivision flat that's shown mm -hmm. could not do a horseshoe. Just curious. He could. And and I think that the proposed layout, you know, staff thoughts were you're so close to making it a horseshoe, why not go ahead and provide that extension? And I think the engineer wanted to make sure there would be enough of a difference between that entrance that's closest to Lester and Lester Road. Maybe to make sure there would be enough distance there between the two roads. But that was our initial recommendation after seeing this plat was that probably would make more sense to go ahead and connect from a, um, an aesthetic standpoint as well. I, I believe when this discussion came up before it was the proximity of it to Lester Road. If they didn't want to exit that close to mm -hmm. another road, even though I was going to the road, so that's why they didn't complete the portion. And this is. I agree, sir. And I think this is their this is their first. Here's our concept. It clearly it does not meet all of our standards, especially the traffic portion. So I think that would be adjusted. But I think the intent from staff was to say yes, a horseshoe, even with 21 lots, it may not be required. It may be something you just want to go ahead and connect because it makes better sense for the development in the area. Yes, Jason, is there water and sewer available in the area now? I know we were putting it in out to the, yes, sir. To the middle school at one time. Um, you can barely see it on the zoning map, but one of the main changes between last year and this year is the county has run water and sewer up Leicester Road and back down Copeland Road. So this particular development has water and sewer on the eastern and the northern side. Mr. McClendon, you have a question? No, I was puzzled uh, when we talked about this last year, and um, even more so now. Those individuals that illicitly signed the document, was anything ever done with them, or did we just throw it out? Andre, that here. Jason? Staff, uh, staff did go out and do uh, research on the petition, sir. Literally, sometimes phone calls, sometimes literally knocking on people's doors. Uh, and all I can tell you is out of the, if there were 18 signatures, then we verified that four of those were forged. But what happened to the four that were forged? We notified them, they notified us, and, and that was where the communication stopped. But you verified 14? 
We did not. We only were able to get a hold of a limited number of people, and of those individuals we got a hold of, we verified that four of them confirmed they did not sign that petition, even though their names were depicted. <coughs> so we updated them, sir. We um, you know, shared our contact information with them, but we just let them know this case will be coming back up. They probably will be hearing about it, and, and we left the communication there. Can I just get another clarification? So this case will last year, is that what you said? Yes, ma'am. Um, was denied all costs from here and from the county? Yes, ma'am. I believe I believe the planning commission and the county commission both yeah. both denied. Yes, ma'am. Now, do I know if it was unanimous? I would have to, I would have to double check that, but I do believe the ultimate recommendation was for. So, what is the main difference this time around between this application this year and what it was last? Year? <coughs> Okay, there were 28 signatures on that petition. And there were a large chunk of people who were in the guest family, and then there were other signatures in the area. So I wanted to make sure I got that number up, 28 total, sir. Um, Commissioner, I would say the, the biggest differences are the delivery of water and sewer to the area, the um, updates with the signatures. That was certainly something that was not known last year that I do think had an impact on this case because I think some of the sentiment was for neighborhood opposition with the case, and honestly, we thought there was more than actually than there ended up being. So those are the, the two main updates, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. you have questions, Commissioner? Uh, been, I'm sorry, Commissioner Hall, go ahead. On this map, I just noticed there's a, a white strip of land between the subject property and the one <coughs> in the south. Mm -hmm. Is that oh, who's that owned by? Either one of the property owners? It is. It's uh, it's owned by the property owner to the south. Okay. They just happen to have a strip of agricultural zoning that separates them from the subject property. Okay. I want to say it's anywhere from 50 to 80 feet wide. Okay, very well. There being no more questions from staff, I will now entertain somebody wishing to speak in favor of this request to come forward at this time. Who wish here wishing to speak in favor of this request to come forward? State your name and your address for the record, please, sir. Bill, Bill Bradley, uh, under the property line. Uh, on October 15, October 12, 2015, uh, the Lyon County Board of Commissioners received a petition from the guest family and others. The handwritten letter to the name of the old Dale Rivers, the senior business him as an objective father to the zoning. Uh, and we discussed these issues, and, and uh, I'm here to entertain the questions that we have. Commissioners, any questions for Mr. Brandon? Commissioner <clears throat> uh, Colton. Mr. Brandon, would you have a problem with, uh, with having two points of ingress and egress rather than one uh, as a condition to develop? I would, I would have to see it. And, and the condition is to have it come out on Leicester Road and Dirt Road and just curious would, and that would put you in responsible for paving it would you have a problem with that uh, I would entertain uh, uh, we have researched and getting a grant if I can get the grant to pay it I, I'll, I'll deal with that here. because I think there's a whole thing going on here in the and so I think I should be compensated for people lying about what we want to I don't know if paving and gravel is acceptable method of paving or not. I will defer to the engineer on that. Mm -hmm. uh, but just as long as you'd be, if you're open to that, if he yes, says it's got exactly. to be asphalt paving, would you be? Yes. Yes, I'm, I'm willing to work with the county. I'm willing to that I can get to this project done. Any questions for the presenter? Commissioners? Mr. Brown, thank you very much, sir. Anyone else here this evening wishing to speak in favor of this request? Anyone else wishing to speak in favor? Please come forward. There be none. Anyone here this evening wishing to speak against this request? Please come forward and state your name and your address for the record, please. My name is Rick Yes. I live in the left room, directly behind the ground property. 
built our home there was probably over two years ago. We moved from Southern Division to Brooks County. The boots are not being in someone's backyard. And we're still against this road wall here. But like I said last time, I'm listening like it's back in the face of us. Here's just a few places around the lake that, that the surrounding neighbors have a concern with. All the surrounding property owners have larger tracts of land. They're going to have to make the from around that property. Privacy is always to be an issue with the proposed subdivision. The traffic is a major concern for this location of the last little to be on the road. It's not very clear. It's already an issue in the mornings and afternoons. If they travel during these hours, they are set to the Coastal Road and that's true. It's used as a turnaround point for a lot of times. That's a turnaround spot as well as people's driveways in the area. Emergency vehicles would also have a problem as far as problem to this added condition. After all, Coastal Road is only a two way road. Unless the road is already used as a cut through road, as well as other families on this road, we have small children who are picking right away too fast for safety and for our children to turn up. People also tend to use less roads in the past than uh, no tracks on it. Bring them to this location or bring more people. Yes, Any questions for the presenter? Any questions for the presenter? Mr. Gaines, you said you live south of this property, Maitland behind it. Yes. Is that kind of showing your house in the very bottom of that picture up there? I don't think you see it, can you? You can't really see it. He's past that white area, Brent. That, uh, that shows a little better, sir. In the RP in there. Okay. <clears throat> I'm just curious, Mr. Yes, if, if the primary and secondary of the subdivision entered an exit off Lester Road, would what would be your thoughts on that? I was curious about your statement about <coughs> trash on the road. Uh, maybe I missed something. You know. well, in the past, I mean, we've had some summers that people come through there and don't flip off. Mm -hmm. uh, like, uh, it's just like more people can do more than anything. What's the length of, of uh, Fletcher Road from Copa Road to <coughs> Jason, got any idea? Quarter of a mile? I'm just curious. You said it's used quite often as a cut through. Yeah, I'd say quarter to a half a mile, yes, sir. There's a lot of school cut through there. The school buses use that for a cut through? Thank you, Mr. Yes. Anyone else here wishing to speak against this request, please come forward at this time. <coughs> Give your name and your address for the record, please. My name is Juana Heath. What's the last name again, man? Juana Heath. 2971 Lester Road. I kind of know, uh, well, his property, his guest property, next to ours. And uh, we got about uh, between the Mr. Guest and, and the senior guest. And Mr. Sapp, we have uh, about five ponds in about 60, a little bit less than 60 acres. They're all right behind this property there. And uh, we got wildlife that comes through there uh, and use this area for refuge. Uh, we've got some of them still on the endangered list. Some of them just got off the endangered list. Uh, they're coming through there, and, and this is a safe haven for them. This is going to affect the wildlife. Um, it may not mean nothing to some people, but it does mean something to me. It means something to the kids that I showed this wildlife to. And uh, that's 
my one of my major concerns not to repeat. Copeland Road simply cannot support the traffic. It doesn't support it now. It only supports the people going to school in those peak hours. If they're not going to that school, you don't use that road because you are trapped. You're trapped in there at those hours. Either you've got to go into school or you're going to sit <coughs> And actually, there's one, at one point, you're not even allowed to turn from a certain way on Copeland during peak hours. So it simply can't support it. Uh, Lester, same way. It cannot support the traffic. But my major concern is the, the wildlife and the endangered species that's going to be affected. Okay. I know that there's nothing really you can do to protect them if we put this up to you. Any questions for the presenter? Commissioner? <coughs> Any questions? <coughs> Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. I do have time for one more question to speak against this request. Roger Ball, 2274 Copeland Road. Copeland Road has become a uh, <coughs> shortcut between Madison Highway and Perimeter Road. We've got semis, not only school traffic, but we've got semis going down that road constantly. The traffic in the morning there and in the afternoon is really bad. I go to work past uh, up to Perimeter each day, and that intersection there is downright dangerous because all the people going to school are <coughs> left off the, off the perimeter. Uh, Copeland Road, I've lived there for 30 years. And right now, it's at its maximum capacity for traffic. There's, there's just no other, there's no place, once you get off Copeland Road from Madison Highway, there's no other place to go. Commissioner, any discussion or questions to present? Mr. Board, thank you very much. Commissioners, do we need any further discussion amongst ourselves on this request this evening? There being none, I will ask for a motion at this time. Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> I'll go ahead and do it. Commissioner Wills? Um, you know, last year we've already heard it one time. There's four different people that supposedly is not there that was on there on the list objection for last year. County voted it down last year. I've always had a concern because the school right across from the subdivision. So I make a motion we uh, recommend it now. Okay, so we have a motion from Mr. Willis. Do we have a second? Have a second, Commissioner Rankin, for to the The motion was for denial. Commissioner, any discussion on the motion in a second before we vote? Right. Mr. Ellis, one question, staff. Yes, sir. Is there any is there any plan in place to widen or improve Copeland Road in the near future? Not that I'm aware of, sir. I can double check with the engineer, but I really think that if that since it's so applicable to this case, he would have mentioned that before now. So I would have to say no. I will double check, but I think to try to give you an answer right now, I think he would have told us that if that was on on plans. Thanks, Commissioner Fulton. Any other discussion? There being none, we do have a motion and a second. At this time, all in favor of the motion, please signify by raising your right hand. All against the motion, please signify by raising your right hand. We have two for the motion, six against the motion. <coughs> So, Mr. Chairman, I move we recommend approval from R1 to R21. And I'll second. Okay, so we have a motion for a resubmittal and a second to actually approve the rezoning of this property. Is that what you said, Commissioner Paulson? Yes, sir. Okay, any discussion on the on the new motion? Mr. Chairman, I, I think it may be important to point out that uh, according to the comprehensive plan, R21 zoning is listed as a permitted zoning within this area already. And that um, the planning and the uh, different groups, engineering um, and the technical review uh, group also all approved this and they, and they found that this uh, request is an overall 
is overall consistent with the <laughs> So I think that's um, very important to uh, explain in, in the change of this motion. Okay. So is that something you want to add to or just, just discussion? Okay. Did, did we all hear what Commissioner <coughs> Wild said down here? He had discussion on that before we re vote on that? Okay, so we have a motion and a second for approval of this motion this evening on second time around. No, no further discussion this time. I will take another vote on this. Ms. Carmel? Second. Commissioner Hall. I'm sorry, Ms. Carmel. So at this time we have the motion on the floor for approval of this request this evening. All in favor of this motion, please signify by raising your right hand. That is seven. All against? That is two. Ma'am? Oh, six two. I'm sorry. I'm mad at this. I apologize, Mr. Carmel. Six two. Motion carries. Thank you very much.